guys, what's up? It's Scoundrel here, and welcome to my guide on climbing the ladder in Vainglory. Now, I went from rock solid in December to Vainglorious at the very beginning of February. So it took me about five weeks, but I made it across seven tiers. And I didn't do it in teams, I mainly solo queued. I played a little bit of duo queue in Pinnacle of Awesome, uh, mainly to try and help me over the line. But a lot of the uh, the work that I did was by myself, and I think I've learned a lot of tips to get there along the way. So, and I want to pass those tips on to you guys. Um, I had a lot of knowledge of the game because I, I did a lot of casting, but you don't necessarily need high levels of knowledge in the game because that will come the more that you play. Uh, but I do encourage you to do your research about meta and objective focusing. I will be rela releasing guides on those at some point in the near future, so hopefully you'll find a resource here. Now I'm going to split this guide up into three sections and I think we're going to look at three different groups of skill tiers because different advice applies to different skill tiers. It would be silly of me to give advice to a Pinnacle of Awesome player the same advice that I'd give to a Just Beginning player. So we're going to start at the very bottom and talk about what advice you need from tiers 1 to 4. So at skill tiers 1 to 4 you're likely to run into one of four people. Firstly, you might run into people who just don't care about their rank and will go into ranked mode because they like the competitive setting but will kind of play whatever they feel like. B, people who are just not very good at the game but again also like that competitive setting. C, people like yourselves who are improving and learning and trying to climb. And D, and unfortunately this does happen, Smurfs. Now Smurfs are high elo players that play at the lower skill levels for easy wins or play against or play with their friends for instance. So uh, again, with the Smurfs, we'll, we'll move them to the side for this section because if you play against the Smurfs, sometimes there is nothing you can do about it while you're learning and while you're improving. But store it in the back of your head because maybe you'll get better over a period of a few weeks. You'll meet them at the high elos and you'll absolutely crush them. Now at this level, um, a lot of the people that you will face up against and have on your team are not going to have the best mechanics in the world. Uh, they also won't really know what's meta, they'll kind of pick whatever they want, and you often will end up with very weird team compositions. So there are a couple of things that you can do to try and put yourself in the best position to carry this type of game, because this is kind of what I'm going to drill into you um, for skill tiers 1 to 4. You need to be the carry at this point in time. Even if you're playing Rome, you need to build like a carry and try and almost 1 versus 3 and put your team on your back and move forwards because sometimes you'll have teams that play really well and sometimes you'll work as a unit but uh, there will be times where your teammates are playing badly and you need to step up to the plate to ensure that you're the team that comes out on top. So at this point in time you want to start to think about maining a role. Um, if you can I would suggest playing a lane or jungle hero but if you can't do that and you want to main roam make sure you pick a roam that can itemize aggressively. I'm talking about Lance, Catherine, Adagio, Fortress because you need to step up to the plate and do enough damage to potentially carry. I actually played almost exclusively Lance and in the lower tiers I would be getting Tension Bow almost every single game. So a lot of what you can do here is, is being able to be aggressive with your build paths because if you can land your damage more often than not you're going to be playing against people that just won't be able to land their damage and if you can practice even as a roam just getting that damage down and being a huge threat you can actually carry games pretty efficiently. On the back of that make sure you pick two to four heroes that you feel like you like or suit your role or suit your play style and stick to them. Don't start deviating across the entire breadth of heroes that Vainglory has to offer. Try and pick two to four and stick with them. Like I said, I played pretty much Lance, Ringo, and Gwen all the way up to Vainglorious. So I had three heroes and I made it the way all the way to Vainglorious. So try and stick within the realms of a small hero pool because you can become really practiced at them. You can learn all the tips and tricks behind them. And by the time you get to the higher ranks, you'll be in a position where you already know that hero really well. Your mechanics have been improving. And and you'll just do really well off the back of that. Now that you've picked your hero, there are things that you can do in the game to help increase your odds of winning. The first of which comes with some research though. Before you get onto the Halcyon Fault, make sure you know what skill order to take on your hero. What to take first, what to max first, and what to overdrive. Because doing it in the wrong order can really hamper your damage output or your, your utility in game. Because actually levels in skills often make up more damage than items themselves. So make sure you know exactly what you're doing with your skill path before you start playing. Now I'm not going to talk to you in depth about item builds here but I'm going to give you some general hints and tips for carries, junglers and captains. 
for carries, don't be afraid to build super aggressive. Now, if your mechanics aren't good and you're not so confident with stutter stepping, which I will talk about in a bit, by the way, it makes more sense to go down a critical strike orientated build. I'm talking about things like Sorrow Blade, um, into Tyrant's Monocle, Tornado Trigger. Actually, avoiding Breaking Point can be really good at this level because Breaking Point requires you to know what you're doing in terms of stacking up in a team fight. You have to be constantly basic attacking. Whereas at this level, it might just be better to go straight up Critical Strike on your weapon power carries. The same applies for um, Crystal Power carries, just being super aggressive with your build path. One of the major mistakes I see lower level players make is that they actually itemized too heavily into defense early on when a reflex block would do if you just learnt to keep your range and learnt to predict skill shots. Um, so realistically, for carries and junglers, make sure that you are being aggressive enough with your build pass. Be as offensive orientated as you can because you will... Almost certainly with practice be able to deal out more damage than the enemy can send to you, especially because skill shots are very, very easily missed at this level. Uh, and that actually leads me on to my next point. When you're playing a carry hero, it makes a lot of sense at the lower levels to play a point and click damage carry. I'm talking about basic attack orientated carries like Gwen and Ringo, because it doesn't take much to tap on the enemy hero. It's a lot harder at this level to play something like a Scarf or Celeste and actually carry with it, because it's a lot harder to hit the skill shots. So so if you want to carry yourself easily, you have to work on the premise that the people you play against probably aren't going to hit their skill shots very well. You might not be able to hit your skill shots very well. So pick up a basic attack carry and carry with it. There are three main things that you'll want to work on mechanically at this level to improve at the game and increase your odds of getting out of these skill tiers. The first of which is practice landing your skill shots. Skill shots are super important and if you want to play a hero that relies on skill shots and not on point and click, then you need to be hitting them to deal the damage. If you're going to pick up Lance and you're missing every single one of your impales, you're going to be a useless Lance. Now you can practice your skill shots in bot games, sure, but also it's probably better done in casual games where there are people that will try and dodge them. Now if you want to hit a skill shot, 90% of the time it's all right to aim at the enemy hero but again if they are going to be practiced at dodging you may want to aim just behind them or just down from them lots and lots of players will either move back towards their turret when they see a threat or they will try and dodge downwards because it is the most natural way to dodge on a touch screen or anything really because they'll try and click downwards from that skill shot line so aiming behind them and downwards is actually going to give you the best chance of hitting them if they try to dodge Secondly, practice your mechanical stutter steps and general mechanics anyway. So making sure you're consistently moving, that's a great mechanic. You want to be moving between ability casts, you want to be moving between basic attacks, that's called stutter stepping. We'll talk about that at the end of this section. I'll have a small guide on stutter stepping for you. And finally, you want to practice last hitting. You can do this very easily in solo practice games. Don't buy any items, go to lane and just try to land as many last hits as you want. As a guide, you want to be getting between 9 and 10 per minute. A godlike CS is about 12 per minute, so 9 to 10 per minute is about what you want to be at in Vainglory. Also in the jungle, really focus on the farm. Out farming your opponents will give you huge item spikes because they will not farm very efficiently. If there is one thing that will make you better and stronger and harder hitting, it is farming. Farming is the number one thing I can tell you to get you a huge item lead over your opponents at this level. There are two final things that I want to mention here that will become more relevant as you climb further in the skill tier. This will be looking at counter picks, looking at drafting phase, knowing what counters your hero pool, knowing how to counter a specific hero on the enemy team. You can learn this through hero guides. There are lots of YouTube guides about it. Hint, hint, my channel will be doing some soon. Um, and you'll also learn through playing yourself. The next point is, and this is something that is true for all MOBAs, more CC is better. So if you are wondering what to play, or you can play a hero with good crowd control like Catherine or Finn, more crowd control usually helps you win games, especially at the lower tiers, because people won't be as apt at dodging it. Reflex blocks won't be used as frequently. So anything that can just stun or slow or make it easier for your team to win is always good, especially if you're trying to carry from the captain position. So I promised you a small guide on stutter stepping at the end of this section, which I'm going to do right now. Stutter stepping is a move that we use on our ranged carries to kite, and at very high attack speeds it can actually increase your damage output by cancelling basic attack animations and landing more basic attacks than your model is actually showing. So how you do stutter stepping is actually quite simple, and I'm going to show it with a series of red dots on the screen, so follow Ringo very carefully. 
I click, click back, click there, click back, click there, click back, click there, click back. It's literally a series of two point clicks, one on the target that you want to click on, another on the direction that you want to move directly afterwards. So it's click on the target, click away to move, click on the target, click on the way to move. And you will very slowly both attack and move in a direction, which is very good against melee carries trying to chase you down because they will have to move to then get another basic attack on you. And you will always have that range advantage on them because you are moving away from them while basic attacking. It's a very useful skill to master, and once you master it, you can actually move up the skill tiers very, very quickly. So now we're going to talk about tiers 5 to 7, and at this point, you and your players around you are going to be more mechanically sound. So stutter stepping, you'll start getting the hang of, skill shots will become more consistent, so you can expand your hero pool to include heroes that do well off hitting skill shots like Celeste and Scarf. But as a consequence of that, you will need to be more adaptable. So you're going to need to be able to learn to fill in hero select because at this point being a captain and although being aggressive is great you will need to start thinking about real captain items because at tiers five to seven people genuinely have got some decent skill behind them so if you're going to take up the captain role it is perfectly acceptable to be aggressive but you will want to consider at times going down a traditional captain route so being adaptable and filling in hero select is incredibly important and now looking at the game specifically, you need to start learning about the items and when to be adaptable with your item build paths. In the early tiers, it's very easy to just build the same thing every game and force a carry with it. But at this stage, you need to be starting to think about, well, they're building armor, so I don't need to build critical strike. I might actually think about a breaking point, or if I'm a melee weapon power carry, I could even consider a bone saw. And as a captain, you can say fountain. Well, what do I need to go next? I'm not just going to go fountain crucible straight away. Maybe I'll, I need the atlas polder in second. So you need to start learning what items do and learning what items counter the specific enemy composition that you're going up against. On top of that, if you're a jungler, you need to start learning when and where you can start counter jungling. A lot of this can be learnt through guides, but say you get a kill on the enemy jungler, you need to go and steal some of their farm. Say you push up your lane, for instance, then you rotate with your team and try and force something in the enemy jungle. So you've got to start learning when and where you can deny enemy jungle farm because this can help you accelerate your lead as the jungler and off the back of that too because it fits quite nicely you need to start learning how to help your team focus objectives if you're a captain just start the gold mine if you have taken down two of the enemies and your team seem to be a little bit lost go and start the gold mine nine times out of ten they'll come and help you take it down if you manage to kill the enemy laner and you know that the enemy jungler and the captain aren't anywhere nearby go into lane and just start help forcing the turret getting the turrets are really important and at this stage in the skill tier focusing turrets should be a priority as well as the rest of the neutral and global objectives that help you close out a game. You should also be looking to come to terms with more advanced techniques uh, and these will really help you when you look to climb beyond Pinnacle of Awesome towards Vainglorious. I'm talking about things like wave control and when I say wave control it's as simple as if the enemy laner is not there or the enemy laner has just been killed, shoving that minion wave to turret to allow you to get turret damage and denying the enemy laner some farm or trying to freeze the wave when you have aggressive control of it, forcing the enemy laner to come to you, especially if you have your jungler or captain in the side brush next to you and there is no vision there, because if you pull them towards your turret by freezing the lane, you are going to be putting them in a position where they are easily ganked, and then once you gank them, you can shove the lane and get it towards the turret. You can kind of see the cycle that I'm wanting you to employ here. On top of that, you should be learning to rotate. That means literally as it might sound, going out of lane and looking for global objectives. So you could rotate down to the gold mine, or you could rotate to help defend an invade, or you could rotate to help facilitate an invade on the enemy jungle. So learning to rotate out of lane and running, learning to rotate out of the jungle, for instance, you should move up from the jungle to rotate to help take a turret if you're a captain or a jungler, or rotate up to help facilitate a team fight or skirmish in the lane. So learning to move from your set path of farming out of the lane or the jungle to go and facilitate global objectives or help and uh, reinforce in a team fight situation. And finally, you should also be looking to start building defense where appropriate. While it might be great in the lower ranks to go all out offense, 
And while that still works at this point in time, you have to be more mindful of your defense. So you have to be thinking about a coat of plates versus a very fed glaive if you're a Ringo, uh, maybe even building an early Atlas Pauldron to try and shut him down when he tries to kill you. You should also be thinking about early reflex blocks and you know when and where you should be using that reflex block, learning to understand the animations that you're like looking to block, especially with Crucible as well as a Captain. And finally, at this point, you should be very comfortable with vision. I mean it. Vision is super important. You know, in the first four tiers, I talked about farming. This few tiers is vision. You should be using scout traps and flares as a captain all the time. And even as carries, sometimes picking up flares can be super useful. I'm going to put a map up on the screen of all the good locations to put down scout traps. Be using them all the time. You should be backing and picking up five flares and three scout traps whenever you can, especially in the early game. So especially huge priority on vision during these few tiers because it can literally win you games. Well, you've made it this far. This is it. The big leagues. Tiers 8 to 10. This is where you'll be making your climb to Vainglorious. Now... You should have been honing all of the skills that you've been learning in the last few tiers as well as we'll build on them over these few tiers too but stutter stepping you should be comfortable with skill shots you should be landing you should be comfortable with rotations and an element of wave control now a good place to start for tips here is the hero select you should be comfortable with pretty much every hero in the game or at least having tried them in battle royale or had a play on them at some point in time and this is simply because people will actually pick you heroes that you haven't asked for in hero select in these tiers, especially laners or junglers that don't want to get counterpicked. They will pick you a random captain hero and you might actually have to deal with it because if you don't take it off them, sometimes they'll troll. I mean, you don't have to take it from them, of course, but if you want to climb, then you have to be adaptable and feeling by taking a random hero that an ally has selected for you is a good way to start. And speaking of counterpicks, you've got to be comfortable with them. And you've got to be comfortable with how the draft phase works. For instance, you'll often see a captain hero picked up on A side first pick because they won't want to give away too many counterpicks. Which means that on your B side, you're going to want to pick a captain and then a laner or a jungler that doesn't really have too many bad matchups but if you get a early pickup of a lane or jungle you have to be fully willing to commit to a counter pick because it can literally win you the game if played right so learning counter picks and putting them into the draft phase is really important at this stage of solo queue ranking and finally, this is not something that I would suggest all the time, but it is something that you should definitely consider. Be prepared to dodge hero select. Seriously. Be prepared to just quit the Vainglory app. It doesn't lose you much um, in terms of any elo whatsoever. You might just get put in a low priority queue, but it will save you elo. Say you have three laners locked in. You're not going to win that game. I mean, you could, but it's very low chances, and it's all about playing the odds. So if you go through draft phase and you think that you've got a terrible team composition and you're pretty sure you're going to lose no matter what, then be prepared to dodge. It's seriously a good technique at saving you time and hassle, and as long as you don't do it too much, it won't have too many repercussions. You also need to understand how to round out a composition, and that's something that you should learn at this point in time. You should be able to fill and fill effectively for the composition, not just pick any old hero that you want because it fits the role. You should be able to say, okay, We've got a lance and a glaive. I'm definitely going to have to go CP and I'm probably going to have to go something that either, can either hold their own because they're going to dive or dive with them. So, you know, I'd be thinking something like a CP sky in that situation. So you just need to learn those kind of tips and tricks and you can do that through research and watching professional play. And that's one of my big tips as well. Make sure you're watching professional play because you can learn a hell of a lot. Now looking at in-game stuff, um, you should be very comfortable with wave control at this point in time. We talked about lane wave control when the first turret's up but you should be able to shove waves when trying to gain control of mid, especially when Kraken is up, pushing an enemy wave in, especially against something like a Saw, who will then have to wind up in lane. It gives you loads of time to get vision control of Kraken, or even start Kraken and try and take it for yourself, or force a fight on the remaining two who aren't clearing the wave. So that's a really good thing to know. Also, learn how to use your item spike. Say you've just picked up an Aftershock on an Alpha, try and find ways to engage with that and utilize that item spike to get you the advantage. And when you've got that advantage, push it. Find safe tower dives, force gold mines, force turrets, be good with your rotations. All about pushing an advantage at this elo. You want to be comfortable pushing the enemy to their absolute limits and taking every 
inch of ground that you can in terms of a global advantage for your team. Beyond this, you should now be hitting most of your reflex blocks. You should be knowing how to balance your offense and defense and knowing when to prioritize either one. For instance, if you're a Ringo and you're going up against something like a Celeste, you might just want to go full DPS knowing that you can just run at her and burst her down very quickly. You should also be very aware about how to position effectively in team fights and how to assess the threats that exist for you. Whether you're a carry or a captain, knowing where the damage is coming from, what damage you need to avoid, and at what position you need to take into a team fight is incredibly important, as well as knowing when to use your skills. Are you saving your skills to burst someone down? Are you just trying to get those basic attacks in before going all in on their carry, for instance? And you should now be fairly confident about how to play a team fight based on your composition. If you've got a CP Kestrel and a Scarf, for instance, you should be knowing that you're going to be spending most of your time poking from range and when you absolutely think that you can win a fight going in and looking for the full-on 3v3 or if you've got a glaive and a ringo you probably know that you're going to be diving somebody and trying to burst them down with the critical strikes or burst them down with that hellfire brew at this level you also want to be predicting where the enemy is as well you need to get used to understanding where the enemy is because it will help you make your own moves you know that the enemy koshka is at her back so that means you can go into lane and get a free gank on their laner or you can try and take away their fronts you know that the enemy koshka is in mid that you, you're pretty behind you don't want to duel her that means you don't go towards your fronts you try and take your backs on top of that you want to be also practicing your jungle rotations what jungle rotations work best for you and what heroes you can do that in practice mode yourself jungles spawn all the time and finally you need to know your limitations if you're behind as a team and you know that you've just been losing every single skirmish you have to understand that sometimes you need to turtle so you just clear waves as best you can and farm your jungle until you get to a point where your composition may come online for instance if you've got a celeste or scarf or a baron you may know that you're going to have to wait five or ten minutes before they get the items necessary to get into the carry mode so learning how to turtle and not throw your advantage away by not fighting all the time is also also very important and finally these are going to be kind of general tips that don't necessarily just apply to the climb to vainglorious but in general are quite useful first of all learn the meta Honestly, just try and find out what is strong right now. You can read the patch notes to see what gets buffed and nerfed, but also look at pro play. You can look at streamers or just learn from playing ranked yourself. Um, secondly, try and find similar ranked people to play with. I definitely found in Pinnacle of Awesome that I was having more success when I was duo queuing uh, than I was solo queuing. So especially just having one person on my team that I could communicate with over voice comms made it 10 times easier to try and win games. Take a break when on a losing spree. Honestly, if you've lost more than three in a row, put your, your iPad, your phone, whatever you use down and just take a break for a second. Honestly, it can get really stressful and you can go on tilt very easily. So managing tilt and taking a break when necessary can be very, very useful. And last but not least, use the bloody mute button. We have all had that person who spams question mark pings or spams thumbs up and smiley face and it just makes you feel terrible. Use the mute button, you won't see their pings. Honestly, it was the best thing that I've done in some games. They may troll, they may throw the game, but I felt so much better and it helped me concentrate as well. And when I'm concentrating, I'm more likely to carry the game. Finally guys, I want to say practice, practice, practice. Honestly, it's the best thing that you can do to improve. Never mind all the tips that I've given you here, as well as indications as to what you should be learning. You should be practicing, and when you practice, you will get better at something. That is just how it works. Anyway, I hope this has been useful for you guys. Um, I made a very quick climb to Vainglorious, so I'm just trying to tell you about what I have been learning and how I went about learning some of it. I can't tell you about everything. I'm just giving you guide points for your own learning process process and hopefully by your own learning you'll eventually make it into Vainglorious 2. I'll see you there.